All right, hey guys. Today I'm just talking about this new product that hasn't actually come out yet. It is called Chip. Not the Chip, just Chip. It's the world's first $9 computer. Uh, I'm not just going to be showing this page. We're going to be talking about it and talking about how it relates to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, one very advantageous point to this is it's quite a bit cheaper than the Raspberry Pi, coming in at the lowest end model being $9. Now you should note that the lowest model does not come with everything. Uh, it does come with everything you need to get started though. So alright, let's go ahead and look at the Raspberry Pi real quick. As you can see, the Raspberry Pi comes with two USB ports, a, is that the ether yeah, Ethernet, uh, HDMI, composite, and a pinout right here, and you got some ribbon cable stuff over here, and then there's power on the side. And now let's go ahead and look at the chip. Uh, oops, not there yet. You can see the chip right here. I'm kind of upset they don't have any larger images, really. They have a few images like this. <clears throat> from what I can see and from what I've read so far, it does not actually include any USB ports, so that may be a problem for some people. Uh, it is meant to be a bare-bones computer, of course. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the specs real quick, which I believe is up here. The nice thing about it is it actually comes out of the box with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Although it's on chip Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so I can't imagine the signal will actually be great, but it should be good enough for you to just do basic um, SSH and, you know, other connection stuff. Uh, you won't be downloading movies or anything on here. <clears throat> Alright, so, yes, the chip is quite powerful for 1 GHz processor. I believe it's single core, 500 megabytes of RAM, and 4 gigabytes of storage. Um, the interesting thing about these 4 gigabytes is, as you'll see from these images, there's no SD card slot. So all the internal memory is on the device itself. It's on this system on a chip. <clears throat> that worries me a little bit because um, I've heard stories about people who are using these things for like, uh, like uh, combining a bunch of Raspberry Pis together to make like a, super, a mini supercomputer. And those people tend to go through SD cards pretty fast. So hopefully that'll be interesting to see how well the internal memory performs. But the bad thing is, <clears throat> with this internal memory as being on the chip, uh, if you corrupt the internal storage somehow, you'll kind of be out of luck. Again, it's only nine dollars, but I mean the amount of time it takes to replace this based on, instead of just going to the store and picking up another SD card. Also, if you want to switch operating system, I can't really see that being as easy when you're working with uh, a single built-in storage versus being able to just pile a bunch of uh, SD cards or pre-installed storage. So I'm not just going to completely bash this thing. I think this is very interesting. As you can see, I'm actually backing this myself. Um, but the interesting thing is, where is it? Let's scroll down. It comes out of the box with the only output as being uh, composite. So that's pretty interesting. It means you'll be able to hook up to uh, your old TVs. Um, but the cool thing is, it's actually coming out with an official VGA board. This is something the Raspberry Pi was significantly lacking. I know some of you just have uh, HDMI on all your monitors and maybe DVI so you just use an adapting cable, but I have a lot of old VGA monitors. So it would be really, really nice to be able to have one of these things just, you know, sitting in the back, hook up to my VGA monitor, use it as like a server or like a mini computer or something. Now, um, the interesting thing is they're advertising it for doing documents and stuff, and that should be fine enough with the 1 gigahertz processor, but I do know that I, I have pretty much all the major renditions of the Raspberry Pi, the B, the B+, and the Raspberry Pi 2. I can tell you the one, the single core model is not ideal for web browsing at all. They show some web browsing here. For text pages, it's pretty okay. You could probably Google with it, but I mean, anything with like JavaScript or whatever just really fails on a 1 gigahertz processor. Um, on a single processor, and that was neat. that was a little bit below one gigahertz before, but I overclocked mine. You can see it is running a lightweight Linux distribution, which is pretty cool. Uh, it has open source uh, document application install, ABI Word. I haven't used that in a while, um, but I think I saw LibreOffice in the picture before, so that's pretty cool. Uh, looking down here, we have this is one of the interesting selling points. They have it pre-made for portable for the Raspberry Pi normally. Uh, you'd have to buy like a whole bunch of like third-party accessories to make it portable. You'd have to do a lot of like uh, custom boards and stuff. Uh, some people make some third parties that you buy pre-made, but for this, they're going to be actually offering not at the time of launch, but they're going to be offering things specifically for portable. There's a board with uh, buttons here, and it has a little hole so you can make a kickstand. There's an injected molded case, and it even has pinout at the top. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you'd have to probably get a custom case for, the, well, I mean, there's a case right here, but I'm not sure if it supports the buttons. That's just for the back, I believe. But it's pretty interesting. I mean, you slide it in there, and you can have your, um, 
your what is this called? The chip actually in there. Uh, the processor that it uses is the uh, is the A13 All Winner system on a chip that is actually used in a few Chinese tablets. I have not heard the R8 revision, so hopefully that's a little bit better. The tablets I've used with the All Winner is are pretty good, but I mean it's not something I want to use for like everyday computing, even basic stuff. And they even have a the portable model. They even make a battery specifically for this, and it actually has a battery. Uh, connector on there, which is pretty cool because the Raspberry Pi did not if you remember they were advertising that you could use batteries with it But you'd actually have to hook them up specially so we're not gonna go too long into this I mean you can check out the page yourself. I was just wanted to point out The main advantages and disadvantages of this I if you're a guy who just likes small computer stuff I still suggest checking this out nine dollars for the starting model. It's five dollars for shipping uh, For nineteen dollars you get the system and a battery so you don't even have to have it plugged into USB Which is pretty good Although, if you start looking at the more expensive models, I mean, look at this. The chip plus HDMI adapter is $24. That's almost getting into Raspberry Pi A te territory there, and you still don't have Ethernet. Sure, Wi-Fi is nice, but if I'm working on a device, I like to have Ethernet with USB ports, because it's so much easier to work with that as opposed to finding a Bluetooth keyboard, uh, pairing it somehow. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how you pair it without a keyboard. Maybe they'll have a startup thing which will automatically let you pair or something, but... I just see a few issues with this maybe. Um, I'm not sure if it has any way to directly connect to your computer maybe to control it that way aside from you know SSH. The other problem I have is the internal storage. Since the storage is baked into the actual card itself, I'm not sure how easy it will be to actually quickly swap between operating systems. Maybe they'll have something like the Raspberry Pi had with noobs where you could switch between have multiple operating systems installed. Where 4 gigs is pretty limited. I wish they had maybe an add-on for a, a external storage of some kind or even just a standard USB ports like have the option to boot from USB but I mean as it is it's a pretty cool device I don't think this is actually going to kill the Raspberry Pi I know the uh, video of this was asking the Raspberry Pi killer my answer would be no this is made for a little bit different uh, feature set maybe people who are more hardware hackers will like this a little bit better because once they get it set up there's a lot more you could probably do with it with all the extra extensions and the fact that it, it's pre-set up for a battery and stuff, that would be pretty cool. Like this pocket chip device, that will easily bring down some uh, things people are trying to work with. And the size too. You get decent specs, so you could probably emulate up to maybe Super Nintendo games on this if you wanted to build a, a pocket retro system. And it's maybe like two-thirds the size of the Raspberry Pi, I believe. I don't have the dimensions in front of me. Here are the dimensions here. And it's micro USB here, so that's out. And uh, Oh, there is a standard USB port. My mistake. Uh, composite, nope, yeah, USB port right there. So you do have a USB port, so that is helpful. I, I missed that, I'm sorry. But, I mean, overall, it does, the Raspberry Pi has the advantage of it's been out for a few years, so it has, it'll have a lot better support. It has removable storage, has way more USB ports, so, and it has Ethernet. You definitely won't want to use this thing for a mini server, because Wi-Fi is just not dependable. So, um, I am definitely really interested in this thing. If you guys want to do DUI projects or stuff, I was definitely just checking this out. I really hope someone can get a uh, uh, Cody or whatever it's called, what previously called XBMC running on this. That would be pretty cool to have an even smaller device for that. But I mean, with this thing being on Kickstarter and a lot smaller release, uh, I can't really see it getting as much support hardware wise as the Raspberry Pi. So, Raspberry Pi, you get all these cases, all these accessories pre made for that. This looks like they're offering them first party off the bat, but you'd have to get a lot more third party support for this thing to really pick, take off. So uh, my final thoughts are, it looks like a good project. The company that's making it has actually already released the project. As you can see here, they've made the Midoto hackable gift camera. Uh, it's powered by a Raspberry Pi, funny enough. So, they've, so they clearly know what they're doing. They've done hardware hacking stuff before. So now they're coming out with their own platform. So maybe they'll make their own camera mod for this too. So yeah, that's what I have to think about that right now. <laughs> I made this video a little bit longer than I expected, nine minutes. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to, there'll be a link in the description to check out the chip. Uh, you have 25 days to go. If you guys really, really want to get in the early platform, I suggest waiting until the last 10 days or so. And just keep hitting that refresh button. I can guarantee a few of these guys will drop out at the very end. That's what always happens with Kickstarter projects. And maybe you'll be able to pick up a slot. But yeah, this looks like it's going to be a very interesting product. Uh, as soon as I get mine in, I'll be doing some videos on it maybe. Uh, so I'll see you guys later. Bye.